What the fuck is joint health? That's what the title says. I want to spend a few minutes talking about my perspective on that because I see a lot of bullshit out there, a lot of bad information, maybe not intentionally bad, but I think there's a lot of misconceptions about that. And so I'm going to tell you about my experience with this stuff. Now, I've been training people for thir almost 14 years. Uh, the last seven of those years have been using functional range conditioning principles for training joints and tissue specifically. So it's a huge part of what I do for work. It's also been a huge part of my own training. I've seen really the best results I've ever had training myself and other people with it. So it's important to me. Um, and, you know, a lot of the misconceptions I think out there are maybe based on just lacking experience with it. So my hope is to address all that. Um, I'm going to use my own shoulder as an example of, of how I would look at a joint to try to see what that joint might be good at uh, and what it's not going to be good at and, and to, to really help prioritize what needs to be trained. Because we can make a joint healthier, which I'll talk about a little more specifically, um, with training, just like we can make something stronger like a squat by squatting the principles are really the same we just happen to be really focused on specific anatomy as opposed to a shitload of anatomy working together and that is a part of joint health like the better those individual components work the better they're all going to play together so this is very valuable when it comes to training all right so the shoulder joint if i want to take a look at somebody's shoulder i have somebody who comes to me who's Maybe they want to get stronger, they've been doing pull-ups, their shoulder doesn't feel great when they do pull-ups and we're trying to figure out why. Well, the first thing I want to look at is how much independent motion does that shoulder joint have? Where do they have to move other parts of their body to try to get there? And the main reason for this is this just tells me what their shoulder can do. So if I look at a shoulder car, which is in functional range conditioning world, we call independent joint movement a controlled articular rotation, but basically I have somebody go through external rotation, bringing their arm overhead, they're internally rotating, they're essentially trying to find all of their end ranges of motion of that joint without moving other body parts. Now, if they bring their arm up and they're like, Maybe it pinches when they get up to here. Maybe to get their arm overhead, they have to move their whole spine and their shoulder blade. That tells me that their shoulder in its, in its uh, individual state has some limitations in those positions. That's gonna be important if they wanna do a lot of pressing overhead or handstands or pull-ups. That is gonna change the way that their body accomplishes those things. It also might be giving me some indication as to why their shoulder feels like shit when they do pull-ups. Now, Looking at overall range of motion is kind of step one. We want to look deeper at the shoulder joint. We're going to look at rotation of that joint because that tells us a little more specifically what the, the deepest tissue of the shoulder, which is your rotator cuff, what that can do. So if we lay down on the floor, I'm going to hold on to my collarbone here and just internally rotate my shoulder and externally rotate my shoulder. Again, I'm trying to isolate independent movement. I just want to see what my shoulder joint can do in rotation. And so for example, like this is where my shoulder stops in internal rotation. I can go further than that, but I have to lift my shoulder blade up to do that. So that's just two joints moving. So I'm trying to keep it as isolated to rotation as possible. Now how much range of motion I have here and what that feels like through the range and in the end ranges, again, tells me a lot about what my shoulder is going to be good at doing and possibly what it's going to be really shitty at doing. If I go into external rotation and my shoulder stops here, when I do pull-ups, I'm going to crank my shoulder past that. And it's not that I can't do pull-ups like that. I can. I did for a long time. But it means that in those positions, going past where my shoulder rotates, I'm just putting my shoulder into more external rotation than that little system can deal with well. Same thing here. If my internal rotation stops and I don't have a lot, and my goal is to have a big bench press or do a lot of horizontal pushing, I'm essentially trying to work in that weakest position of my shoulder because in, in an untrained state, the further we get into our end ranges, the less work that joint can do. That's why something like jujitsu exploits the shit out of those end ranges. You can crank somebody back into external rotation, and if you get them in a position where their shoulder doesn't do shoulder stuff very well, 
you can submit them because it's hard to deal with that. So if my range of motion is already limited and I'm trying to load these exercises up here, it just means my shoulder is not going to do that very well. Now, I may have all the range of motion and everything looks good. How it feels in those end ranges of motion also indicates a lot about what that shoulder is going to be good at or any other joint. If I go all the way into my end range and I try to load that, I try to crank into more internal rotation and it hurts in the front of my shoulder, that's important. Same thing if I go back into external rotation. If that hurts in the back of my shoulder, maybe it hurts in the front, maybe it hurts in mid-range. All of those things are really important for determining if my shoulder is healthy because a healthy joint can do all of that shit. It can rotate end range. You can load it in those end ranges. It will go into all these positions well freely without having to move a whole bunch of other parts. That's pretty much what joint health is at least from my whole perspective here. And I work with people every day who exercise and train and do lots of healthy shit, but don't necessarily have healthy joints or at least healthy at the level for the things that they wanna do. So that's a huge component of what I do for training people. Now, there's a lot of misconceptions about this. One of the big ones is if you have, say, lacking external rotation, just do more pull-ups and you will get that external rotation. And it's potentially true, but it really depends on the individual. Like if you have really, really terrible external rotation, your body bypasses that shitty external rotation by extending your spine, retracting your scapula. There's all these, all these other parts that move, which means those are really the parts that are getting the most load. That means that that aspect of your shoulder joint that needs to maybe rotate more is probably getting a very small amount of work, which makes it not really improve because loading shit over time is what changes it. And so if my body is kind of bypassing the load through that sucky tissue or, or aspect of joint movement, I'm going to load up the stuff that works better. And that's what I'm going to end up training. So doing pull-ups alone often isn't enough to fix that external rotation. Same thing with many other joints. Every other joint works the same way. I had the shittiest hip internal rotation, like zero degrees of internal rotation, and I squatted and deadlifted and got really strong for my age and size, at least as in, from my perspective. But I still had this really lacking hip joint. And the side effects of that shitty hip joint were my back started to really, really bother me whenever I would squat and deadlift, even with my, my best possible form, squatting and deadlifting, and it's because my back was doing so much extra work because my fucking hip joint couldn't do the things that my hip needed to do in that position. And all those years of squatting and deadlifting didn't improve my hip internal rotation. I just needed to train it. Another big misconception about joint health and, and training for this stuff is that if you train these, this train your joints, you're going to have to be entirely consumed with training your joints and there's not gonna be any other time for training. That's total bullshit. And based on a lack of understanding of how this stuff can be applied, if you need to improve your shoulder rotation and you don't have a really fucked up shoulder, meaning like you didn't just get out of surgery and your shoulder has no movement, you could probably spend 10 minutes twice a week specifically training your shoulder joint and make it completely better over the course of a couple months than it was before, which means it's gonna tolerate way more training and exercise and fun things that you like to do. Another thing is that if you have, say, lacking external rotation, you just have to stop training your shoulder until it gets better. You have to stop doing exercise until it gets better. Again, total misconception. If your shoulder hurts every time you do pull-ups overhead or dead hang stuff, you should probably modify that and find a different way to do pulling. And we can figure that out pretty easily once we determine what your usable range of motion is. So you can pull maybe in less range of motion. Maybe you can do horizontal pulling. There's always options for training. You never have to abandon the stuff that you're doing. We just need to be a little more strategic about it. And we can do that really easily when we start looking at people's movement based on some of these principles. I think that's probably it for now. This could be a fucking 20 minute long video, but I'm gonna try to cap it here. If you have questions about this, comment below. Ask me stuff. I would love to talk about it. Thanks. <laughs>